Hey everybody, Joe Patty here. I got a different camera angle to the uh, blah, 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 blooper. <laughs> Hi everybody, Joe Patty here. And today I want to show you a couple little things. I got a different camera angle because I want to be able to stand on this side to show you guys. This was one of the Little Mermaids that I was working on and I put a coat of resin on it and then I put a second coat of resin on it when that was dry just to make some um, a little seaweed design. Now I want to tell you about the seaweed design. We'll talk about that first. I used for the seaweed design Primary Elements Guatemala Green. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Let me see here. Um, yeah, the lighting's bad. Anywho, Guatemala Green. It even looks blue in the jar. And it looks blue on my canvas. So, remember that, you guys. If you buy Guatemala Green pigments from Primary Elements, they are blue. <laughs> this, I can see a slight green tint, but I don't know. It's mainly blue. And also, on Primary Elements, they're gold. And I've mentioned this before in a couple other videos. Their gold is really yellow gold. So, if you guys like that, that's a perfect yellow gold to go get. Now, I want to show you this. Um... When I was painting this, I used, to make little dots of bubbles, I used some uh, glue, sparkle glue. Let me see here. Let me go get that. There it is. I used this Craftsmark uh, Glitter Paint Writer in silver. And what I did was I went around and did little dots of bubbles. Then, when that dried, I went ahead and used this, because I love this on lots of stuff I use this for, my diamond glaze. Now, what I did was after that, the silver dotted bubbles dried, I used the diamond glaze and I went around and put the glaze dots over the bubbles. And this was before I did the resin. So I want to tell you, after that dried and then I put the resin on and after that dried, I had these little um, indentations. Actually, I'm going to show you a picture of it. It'd be better. I'll show you a picture here in a second. So wasn't that strange? So I got those little dots. So what I did was now I went back over it and just filled in the little dented circles with the glaze coat again, this little diamond glaze. Now it still has a little indents in it, but that's okay. This is just a painting for a little girl's room and it's free. I'm just giving it to her and uh, it's going to be okay because uh, you know how little kids are. They're going to touch it and see it and want to feel it and everything. And I find that to be true about a lot of art. I have art on my walls or art that I've gotten from somebody and I put it up on the wall. And I do look at it from a distance and I see it from a distance. But when I do go to someone else's house and I see art on the wall, I do get a close up. And uh, you know, some art is so beautiful, it makes you want to touch it. So. I don't know. I, I figured this little girl's going to be touching it and picking at it. <laughs> so anyway, now I want to show you something else. Um, let me grab this over here. Well, first of all, I wanted to show you these little flowers that uh, Saskia sent me. And there's two of them, and they're really pretty. She does such a great job with those alcohol inks, you guys. I'm serious. These are beautiful. At first, when I got them and I opened the package, I thought they were one flower on... The same flower on two different uh, little pieces of paper, but they're two flowers and they're beautiful. I want to show you guys how I finish off the back of them. Uh, a lot of times I don't do anything to the backs because it's up against the wall anyway. But when I use resin, I do like to get rid of the bumps because it's kind of cloppity on the wall and bangs on the wall and it doesn't hang even or whatever. And it could scratch the wall. So on this one here, this was my deer painting, uh, resin painting, and what I did was on the back, I went ahead and just scraped off the lumps from the resin, and then I spray painted it. So it has a nice edge in it, a nice back, and then I'll put felt tips on there before I put the hanger on. And I usually get a big sturdy hanger, and then I resin that in. And it just goes to show you that it's like every time I go to video tape, somebody walks in the door. I mean, I could go all day without taping. And then someone will walk in the door. And here comes somebody right now. 
Just like when Doris and I did our little video. Here comes people in and out. Just never fail. So then on this one, what I did was, I wanted to show you how I get rid of... Okay, stop. <laughs> Two hours later. Okay, now the back edges. What I wanted to show you guys is this. If you have something like this, whether it's resin or acrylic or whatever, you don't want to lay it flat on anything unless it's padded. But you can't leave the padding open because then what I'm gonna, the technique I'm gonna show you, if you do something like that, it could catch fire. You don't want that. So, and if you're gonna use this technique, I suggest if you guys have kids around or whatever, make sure they are napping or there's another adult in the house and always keep your, I keep one of these right here, this fire extinguisher right at hand at all times. And then I have it on a metal tray too because plastic will melt and I just don't want any trouble. But let me show you how I do it. And I'm experienced at it so, you know, you guys can have to practice if you want to do it this way. So, see, so you got these bumps on the back from resin. And like I said, they'll bump the walls and everything. And what I do is just take my heat gun, and I, I have this attachment on the end of it, and just heat it up on a little bit. I've already done the rest of the sides, and it doesn't take long. You just heat it up a little bit like that, just for a couple seconds. And then you're just going to slowly scrape. And you don't, want, you don't want to put any pressure on it because you don't want to pick up the canvas. So you're just going to kind of get it warmed up here. Just warming it up. I don't want to warm it up in the same spot for real long so I kind of just move up and down a little bit because like I said you don't want to fire this is wood canvas okay now I think I've pretty much got it warmed up a little bit and then you start at the beginning here and you put a little bit of pressure just a little bit slightly and see how it just peels right off and you keep moving because you don't want it to get too hot in the same spot and that's just how it all comes off there you go I'll finish the rest later, but I just wanted to show you guys. It's nice and smooth. All right, everybody. That's that. I hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks. So, arrivederci, everybody. I'll see you again soon. Back in the studio.